playful, playful, vocal, intelligent. These are the qualities of birds and the reasons that birds as pets are becoming so popular. Birds are very fascinating animals and there is such an amazing variety. A bird for everyone, whether you desire beauty, song, or companionship. But they also have special requirements. If you're considering adding a bird to your family, or you have one already established in your home, it's important to learn as much as you can about your bird. Hi, I'm Marley Littner. As an avian veterinarian, I spend a lot of my time taking care of birds. I'd like to pass along to you some of my tips on bird care and help you to get off to a better start with your bird. Many people think that keeping birds as pets is a new idea, but the truth is birds as pets can be traced back thousands of years. Most historians believe the ancient Egyptians were the first to collect birds, but it was the Greeks who first kept parrots as pets and learn they could imitate the human voice. In fact, birds have played significant roles in the lives of many different groups throughout history. In some European cultures, birds were kept as pets by only the hierarchy of the society. In other areas, such as Indonesia, South America, and the Bahamas, pet birds were not only common, they were often allowed to fly loose in and around the Hudson houses. In the United States, birds are now more popular than ever for a number of reasons. First of all, most people consider birds easier to care for than other pets, such as dogs and cats. Because they don't need a lot of space or a yard to run around in, birds are good choices for small homes, such as apartments and condominiums. It's estimated that the number of bird owners in the United States currently is somewhere between 15 and 20 million. Birds are very intelligent creatures. They have been known to open complicated locks on their cages climb into bed with their owners, sing along with their favorite TV shows, and some can even be potty trained. But perhaps the most important reason for the upsurge in popularity of birds as pets is the fact that birds can be wonderful companions. With the right bird and proper care, a bird can bond very closely to its owner. A relationship combined with the devotion of the dog and yet some of the independence of the cat makes for a very interesting friendship. And since most birds live long lives, anywhere from 5 to 50 years, depending on the type, a bird will have plenty of time to become a member of the family. The decision to bring a bird into your home, or any pet for that matter, is something that shouldn't be done on impulse. It's not fair to the animal. When you choose to own a bird, you're taking on a responsibility for a living creature. Keeping a bird can take a considerable amount of care and attention, but it's all worth the effort. Probably the two biggest concerns you should consider about bird ownership are their mess and their noise. With the proper caging and placement of the cage in your home, the mess can be minimized. The actual decibel level of your pet will vary greatly depending on the type of bird you purchase. This can range from the chirp of the finch to the deafening scream of the macaw. Me, I love the noise, but you may not, so check it out before you decide. Another consideration when choosing a bird as a pet is other pets that already share your home. Cats and dogs will naturally be curious. Most dogs can be obedience trained to stay clear of the bird, but cats, well cats will be cats. Even an overweight, half-blind cat shouldn't be trusted. A small, fluttering bird in a cage is just too much temptation, and a cat can do tremendous harm to a bird, even when it's caged. Hanging the cage from the ceiling and putting it high on a pedestal will detour some cats. But if your cat is very aggressive, 
separate living quarters would be necessary. A barking dog can also scare your bird. Try and introduce them slowly. Bird ownership can be a lifelong investment. Some birds can live as many years as their owners. There have been many cases of birds who actually outlived their owners. The actual life expectancies vary dramatically with the type of bird. Smaller birds like finches live about five years. The larger Amazons, cockatoos, and macaws live into their 30s and 40s, occasionally longer. The stories you hear of birds living over 100 years old, while possible, are not very common. Before purchasing a bird, you should consider your expectations of the bird. Are you looking for an interesting splash of color and song to liven up the family room? A bright, perky companion for a child? A bird that expertly mimics sounds and voices? Or a bird to become a unique member of the family? All of these things can be achieved. The key is to find the right type of bird for you. There are many different species of birds from which to choose your new pet. Within each species, of course, there are many variations in color, size, and temperament. We'll look quickly at a variety of species to give you an overview. You'll want to do some more investigation before you decide which bird species is the best for you. There are a couple of good places to look for birds. Pet stores specializing in birds, bird shows, and bird magazines are helpful. Look into local bird clubs and veterinarians who are members of the Association of Avian Veterinarians. Before you consider what species of bird you're going to choose, there's one management technique that separates all species into two very distinct groups. This new concept is hand feeding these birds. Hand fed birds have far more pleasant personalities and behaviors than their wild counterparts because the birds imprint on people. When the chicks are taken from their parents, they are spoon fed or syringe fed until they're weaned. This imprinting on humans from such an early age makes the birds very sociable. For the more expensive birds, some sellers will take a deposit at the time the bird is chosen and then take payments throughout the bird's maturation. This allows new pet owners to pick out their bird before it's actually time to take it home. The new owner can learn about their bird's personality before it's all moved in. They can also have a hand in raising it during that time. Perhaps the best thing about hand-fed birds is that they typically have no fear of humans. In fact, they probably think they are human. Let's take a look at some of the species available, starting with the bajaragar, also called budgies or parakeets. Parakeets are quite possibly the most popular pet bird around the world. Parakeets range in color from striking albinos and yellows to beautiful dark greens and spangled sky blues. Typically, they are inexpensive and easy to find in pet stores. When purchasing a parakeet, you should look for a young bird, about eight weeks old. Their small size and active personalities make them good pets for children. They're lively and friendly, and usually quite easy to tame, especially when purchased young. The boys can be told from the girls by their blue sear. The sear is the skin around the nostrils. Girls are usually tan to brown in color. Cockatiels are becoming increasingly popular as pets, especially in the United States. They are known for their perky little head crests and their whistling ability. Cockatiels average about 12 inches in height and can be found in several color variations. The standard color is gray. The most popular of the cockatiel mutations is the lutino or white cockatiel. Other variations include pearls and cinnamons. When people think of parrots, they usually think of the Amazon parrot. Amazons are stout, stocky green birds. They can be very good talkers, depending on the species. Double yellow heads, yellow napes, and blue fronts are usually considered the best talkers. Amazons have been known to live for decades, so be prepared for a lifelong companion. The large macaw parrots of South America, with their long tails and powerful beaks, can make coming up with the right cage configuration a little more challenging. They require a very large and strong design. Macaws can be very entertaining and a rough and tumble companion. Some are good talkers. Due to their rather formidable beaks, it is best to carefully choose the temperament of your new macaw. Blue and golds and hyacinth macaws are usually pretty even-tempered, while the red-headed scarlet tends to be a little bit hot-headed. 
Macaws frequently become devoted one-person birds. Another parrot family from South America is the conure. Conures have many of the same characteristics as macaws, but they don't grow to be nearly as large. Conures can become exceptionally tame, especially when they are hand-reared from a very young age. They can learn to imitate household sounds, and some even learn to say a few words and phrases. Conures have wonderful personalities, are lively and playful, and fun for children and adults. So why doesn't everyone have a conure? Probably because they can be very noisy with a rather high-pitched call. If this bothers you, best to listen very closely before you buy. The very popular cockatoo originally comes from down under. Their unusual plumage is unmistakable. They have a large crest of feathers on their heads that can be raised at will. The more common species of cockatoos come in handsome combinations of white, yellow, and pink. They're very intelligent and affectionate. Cockatoos that are bred in captivity and acquired at a young age train very easily and are one of the more popular birds for bird shows. They do have an affinity for chewing wood, however, so watch out for your antiques and window sills. Some of the tiniest cage birds are in the finch family. Finches are very lively, and their cheerful chittering can brighten any room. There are at least a dozen species readily available, ranging from the sturdy zebra finch to the regal lady gouldian. Most are very active breeders, and will breed easily in their home with the addition of a nesting box. Finches generally live well in groups and can be kept in large aviaries. The other member of the finch family is the well-known canary. Canaries may be best known for the beautiful songs of the male. Many canaries have been specially bred for their singing ability. If you're really looking for the song of the bird, you might want to try two male canaries in different cages in the same room. This seems to stimulate a little competition. So, you've decided on just the right type of bird for you and your family. There are many different ways to purchase a bird. It's always best to buy from someone with a good reputation, either a breeder or a pet store specializing in pet birds. All birds which are imported into the United States are quarantined by law and given a quarantine band. Birds with these bands may have been raised in first-class aviaries from around the world or wild caught in the jungle. All the band means is they were imported into the United States and they were possibly exposed to many birds and diseases during quarantine. Look at a prospective bird carefully. Look for signs of illness or discomfort in the bird. If possible, for conservation reasons, as many pet species are threatened or endangered, and for a generally healthier pet, try to buy domestically raised babies. They may cost more, but it's worth it. Birds should be alert and bright looking. Their feathers are a good indication of the bird's health. Feathers should be smooth and slightly shiny looking and held close to the body. The bird should have a sleek appearance. Ruffled plumage or a dull cast of the feathers may be a sign of illness. Try to get a feeling for the bird's personality and disposition. Is it active or dull and uninterested? Does it seem curious about you or frightened of you or does it just not care? A healthy bird should be active and a little curious. Is it tame? If so, have the owner handle it. Try to avoid buying the quiet, puffed, depressed bird because you feel sorry for him. He may be very ill and bring you nothing but frustration and vet bills. There are many different kinds of cages available for your pet, made of different kinds of materials and designed in different ways. It's not always the most expensive or ornate design that's the best for a bird. Remember, a cage has one primary purpose, to house your pet comfortably and safely. First, if your bird is to be confined in the cage most of the day, it should be as large as possible. It should be large enough for the bird to spread its wings without hitting the sides, and the bird should be able to fly from perch to perch comfortably. An important point to remember is that birds fly horizontally. They don't fly up and down like helicopters, so look for length and depth in a cage rather than height. A good quality cage is one with no sharp edges, doors that fit smoothly, locks that can't be undone by your bird, and cage bars that are strong enough to keep the bird inside. Cages made by reputable companies will not be made with toxic solders or lead-based paints. It's also a good idea if the cage is designed so that you have access to the food dishes from the outside of the cage. 
They are easier to refill and clean because of their accessibility. The food dishes should not be located directly underneath the perches because the bird droppings will contaminate food and water. A bamboo or wooden cage may be very pretty, but they are very difficult to clean and many birds will chew right through them. For best results, look for cages of chrome, stainless steel, or enamel. Some cages, especially imported cages, are painted. One thing to watch for on imported cages is that the paint used may contain lead, which could be toxic to your bird. Another good rule of thumb is to scratch the cage with your fingernail. If the paint comes off, don't buy it. Also, don't buy cages made of galvanized wire. The zinc in the solder is toxic. Buy perches with the same thing in mind as you would when purchasing a pair of shoes. Would you line your shoes with sandpaper? Want to stand on corrugated plastic? Or wear the same hard flats for five years? A variety of natural wood perches is probably the best. Vary the size, the texture, and replace them at least yearly for the best foot care. Your bird will be happiest in its home if it has some things to play with. There are many wonderful types of manufactured toys for your birds to play with. Ask your pet store personnel about different kinds. But remember, safety first, and never underestimate the strength and agility of your bird's beak. They can quickly take toys apart or swallow pieces or get tangled in them. When it's time to take your new bird home, be aware of one thing. Just like humans, birds will have to go through a period of adjustment once they arrive in their new home. Location of the cage in the house can be very important. Birds should be kept out of the kitchen and away from wood stoves. They generally prefer well-lit areas with lots of activity. They also prefer to be up high and against a wall. Drafts are a potential hazard, so check all windows and doors near the cage for leakage. Once your bird is secured in its new quarters, leave it alone for a while to settle down. Keep an eye on it during that time. Is it flying around? Does it seem to be curious about its new home? Is it eating and drinking? Remember, if you've brought home a young bird, it will be weaned, but this may be its first time on its own. It's very important to give it time to itself. Don't spend lots of time with the bird at first, and don't invite all the neighbors over to see your friend. It's also a good idea to have your new bird examined by an avian veterinarian, sometimes during its first few weeks in your home. Keeping your bird's home clean and comfortable is an important part of bird ownership. You should change the paper on the bottom of the cage every day. One helpful hint is to cut several sections of paper at once and lay them in the bottom of the cage. Then every day, you can remove a layer or two of the paper to ease your cleanup chores. There are many potential hazards involved with letting a bird fly loose throughout your house. First, make certain that all the windows and doors are closed. Then, check the house for other hazards. Birds have been known to land on hot stoves, fall into open toilets, and go head first into mirrors. While flying is great exercise for your pet, it does require constant vigilance. Whenever you let the bird fly loose in your home, be sure you leave the cage door open so that it may return whenever it's ready. Traveling with your bird can pose special problems as it is not always easy to take a bird with you. There are several solutions you might consider. You can leave your bird at a pet hotel, at a pet store or veterinarian that boards birds, or leave your bird at home with a neighbor, friend, or family member. There are even professional bird sitters in most cities. Whatever alternative you choose, it is always best to leave specific written instructions as well as the name and phone number of your avian veterinarian. Explain to your bird sitter your bird's likes and dislikes and typical behavior. Leave any special feeding instructions, especially foods your bird should not eat. Helping your bird sitter maintain your bird's normal routine will help you feel comfortable about being away. The common belief about bird nutrition was that if you offered some seeds, water, and vitamins in the cage every day, that's all a bird needed. But today, we understand the needs of birds better, and we have come to realize that birds need a more balanced diet. Good nutrition is the single greatest factor in a pet bird's health and longevity. When it comes to feeding your bird, what I commonly see is a bird seed, cuttlebone, grit, and vitamin diet. 
I have several concerns about this kind of diet. The biggest problem I found is the great emphasis on seeds. Now grains are an important part of the diet, but just a part. Seeds are a good source of B vitamins and carbohydrates. They're easy to feed birds, they store well, and most birds really like them. But there's more to good nutrition than just seed. Basically, you should think of your bird's diet in terms of the four basic food groups. Grains, fruit and vegetables, meat and dairy products. Many of our pet birds are scavengers in the wild. They eat what grain and vegetable and meat material they can find. And you can bet they don't find sunflower seeds year round. They also frequently consume insects, either on purpose for extra protein when feeding chicks, or inadvertently while they are foraging. So in addition to grains, birds also need meats, vegetables and fruits, and dairy products. Meats provide protein, which is an important part of muscle, feather, and beak development. Vegetables and fruits provide many important vitamins, including vitamin A for healthy skin. Dairy products, in small amounts, are helpful for calcium. Just as calcium provides healthy hair and nails in humans, in birds it strengthens feathers, beak, and nails. All these foods should be served just like people would eat them. In other words, vegetables can be cooked or raw, but meat should always be cooked. The Association of Avian Veterinarians has developed a pamphlet which not only lists types of nutritious foods for your birds, but also their recommended percentages of the diet. Your local avian veterinarian should be able to supply you with a copy. Unfortunately, sometimes feeding your bird a balanced diet can be worse than getting a two-year-old to eat his vegetables. Birds are creatures of habit when it comes to eating, so presentation is half the battle. Try introducing pelleted foods that are shaped like natural seeds. Offer fresh fruits and vegetables along with regular food. Birds are very social eaters. Sometimes they'll try new food if another bird is eating it or if they see their owner eating it. If your bird is still resistant to new food, try making it like a toy. Hang it through the bars of the cage or put it in the playpen. Never switch a bird's food cold turkey. You have to gradually introduce the new food while you gradually wean them off the old. Vitamin supplements that are sprinkled on the bird seed have little chance of getting into the bird's system because the vitamin lands on the shell. Since the bird will shell the seeds before it eats them, all the vitamins will fall to the bottom of the cage with the hull. You'll have no better luck with vitamin supplements that are to be put in the water because they break down very quickly. They can actually do a bird more harm than good because the diluted vitamins promote bacterial growth in the water dish. There are many excellent vitamin preparations on the market. What we need is a good way to get them into your bird. I sprinkle mine on soft food that the bird really enjoys, maybe two or three times a week. Grit is a controversial subject, which many feel they really don't need. The gizzard can digest food just fine without it, and the grit can actually cause problems in their systems if they overdo it. Current recommendation is to offer 8 to 12 grains of quartz once every 3 to 4 months. The latest alternative for feeding your bird is a pelleted diet. This allows you to feed your bird a balanced kibble type diet just the way you feed your dog or cat. Many pet stores carry these products and they seem to be the wave of the future. Our last concern is fresh water. It should be kept very clean. Locate the dish where the birds can't poop in it. As I stated before, good nutrition is the single greatest factor in a pet bird's health and longevity. And there are so many problems related to diet, it would be hard to talk about them all. If a diet lacks proper nutritional balance, young birds are likely to have abnormal growth rates, birds are not likely to breed successfully, or else they may produce infertile eggs. Other problems that can be related to an inadequate diet are poor feathers, overgrown nails and beaks, and chronic sinus conditions. Nutrition problems are stressful and can lead to illness if not corrected. Even with the best care and nutrition, some birds will still get sick. 
Unfortunately, birds make it very difficult for their owners to detect illness. You see, in the wild, birds who are sick or injured are picked out by predators and endanger the rest of the flock. So over the course of time, birds have learned to hide their physical problems very well. In fact, if you can tell your bird is ill by the way it's acting, it may already be very ill. Birds are usually very healthy, but if you suspect your bird is ill, you should contact an avian veterinarian as soon as possible. Most illnesses can be treated, but the best chance for success comes with an early diagnosis and treatment. So let's discuss how to spot early signs of illness. One of the best signs of trouble in your bird's system can be seen in abnormal droppings. That's why it's very important to know what normal droppings look like for your bird. A good plan is each day, when you change the newspaper on the bottom of the cage, look at some of the droppings. When you are looking at droppings, you're actually looking at a fecal portion and a urine portion. Color changes can be normal. Before you overreact, think about what your bird has eaten recently. For example, a couple of bites of carrots may produce a flame orange dropping. Eating a large amount of watery fruit may increase the urine produced and cause a very watery dropping, not to be confused with diarrhea. If you do find something that's out of the ordinary in color or consistency, it would be a good idea to contact your veterinarian. Get to know your bird's physique as well as he'll let you. Feel regularly the keel and the abdomen to help monitor his weight. Besides knowing your bird's physical appearance, you should be very familiar with his routine. For instance, drinking an abnormally large amount of water could be an indication of kidney problems. Also, watch for changes in breathing, eating, sleeping, and talking habits. A bird who has stopped eating and talking and is sleeping with his feathers puffed out is probably ill. Birds molt in different ways and in different patterns. Become familiar with your bird's molting pattern. If a molt seems particularly heavy, but the old feathers are being replaced by good-looking, smooth new ones, you probably shouldn't worry. But if feathers are being lost and not replaced, or if new replacement feathers seem abnormal, you may have a problem. During the process of molting, birds' feathers go through a stage that's called blood feathers. When new feathers are coming in, they have blood vessels running down the center. The feather needs this blood during molting to allow them to grow out normally. The appearance of these blood feathers is completely normal, and in fact, very good. It means everything is fine. New feathers are growing in. Birds are very clean animals. In a similar way that cats groom themselves, birds preen themselves. When birds are molting, their new feathers have a layer of skin over them that makes them look like little spikes. This layer dries and flakes off when the birds preen, and the resulting dandruff is perfectly normal. Preening is normal and is not an indication of mites or other problems. There are some common health problems that most all bird owners will encounter at one time or another, and most of them shouldn't make you panic. Most of the problems we'll talk about first are not too difficult to deal with. Let's start with nail care. Overgrown nails can cause a bird to injure itself or get caught up either inside or outside its cage. If it looks like your bird's nails are getting too long, they should be clipped. This is something you can do at home, but if you're worried about it, you may want to take your bird to a veterinarian to have it done. To trim the nails yourself, begin by restraining the bird in your hand. Look at the nail. There is a thin, pinkish streak running through the center of it. That is the blood supply. Use a sharp pair of clippers to nip just the overgrown end off. Oh, goodness. Be sure to cut a safe distance away from the blood supply, and the procedure will be painless for your patient, and there won't be any bleeding. If your bird has black nails, trim back very carefully in small amounts. For nails that bleed easily, it is best to just routinely file them back with a nail file. While a toenail may bleed a little, a situation known as a broken blood feather can bleed profusely. This can happen when a new blood feather gets bumped, breaks, and bleeds. The best cure is to pull the feather and apply pressure to the area for two to three minutes. Don't apply septic powder products as they will damage the skin. Another common disorder, though not as easy to treat, is called feather picking. This condition is not clearly understood, but there are a number of things that are believed to contribute to it. This disease is, as the name indicates, 
when birds actually chew off or pull out their feathers. Feather picking is very hard to treat. Actually, the best way to treat the disorder is to treat the trouble that's causing it. Poor diet and a variety of illnesses can be the cause of feather picking. Avian veterinarians are now learning that feather picking is a symptom and has to be looked at as just part of the problem. Egg binding can be caused by a particular problem with the egg itself, such as a misshapen egg, an exceptionally large egg, or an egg with too soft of a shell. Other causes for egg binding can be overbreeding, calcium deficiencies, a bird that's just too old to breed, and of course our old friend stress. Egg binding can be very serious, and immediate action is required. If for some reason you can't get the bird to a veterinarian immediately, isolate the hen in a warm, dark box. Make sure the hen has plenty of water and increase the humidity. Sometimes this treatment can help the egg to pass. Colds and sinus problems are found in birds all year, but you'll probably find that they're most common in the cold winter months. The signs of a cold are fairly obvious. Just like in humans, look for a runny nose, watery eyes, swollen sinuses, and sneezing. Tail bobbing is also a sign of breeding difficulty. There are many causes of colds in birds, including bacteria and viruses. Many also believe that a deficiency in vitamin A adds to the problem. Whenever a respiratory problem is suspected, it's best to seek veterinary care as soon as possible. In birds, sinus infections sometimes require flushing, antibiotics, and even surgery. Diarrhea is another common ailment in caged birds. If you notice that your bird's droppings are runny and lack shape, diarrhea may be present. However, be aware that watery urine can look just like diarrhea, and this can make diarrhea a little tricky to diagnose. There are many things that can cause diarrhea in your bird. Poor nutrition, spoiled or new food, or lack of fresh clean water can be the culprits. The stress of being brought into a new home or some change in the daily routine can cause intestinal problems resulting in diarrhea. Diarrhea can also be associated with diseases of the intestinal organs. Yeast, bacteria, or viral infections are often seen. Most people don't realize that they have certain bacteria in their bodies that birds don't have. If you let birds eat from your mouth, you can transfer your bacteria to them. Birds can also get intestinal worms, just like dogs and cats. Most of these problems, if treated early, can be quickly corrected. Unfortunately, tumors are fairly common in pet birds, especially common in parakeets. Therapy depends largely on the site of the tumor and whether it is malignant or benign. External tumors on the surface of the skin are the easiest to detect since they can be seen. Internal tumors can be much more difficult. Obviously, the earlier these tumors are detected, the more likely it is that successful treatment can be performed. Some indications of internal tumors are marked weight loss and a dramatic decline in the activity of the bird. Surgery is not always possible, especially in the case of internal tumors. And unfortunately, there seems to be no way to prevent the occurrence of these tumors. There is one disease in particular that all bird owners should become familiar with. Psittacosis is a disease that affects members of the parrot family. It is a very serious disease which can be fatal in birds and it can be passed from birds to humans. Psittacosis is most common in newly acquired birds which may have been exposed to it in overcrowded environments. It is especially common in birds which have been smuggled illegally into the country. There are no definite signs of psittacosis, but there are many signs that might indicate that the disease is present. These include a lack of appetite or weight loss, depression, low energy or activity, watery droppings that are yellow and green in color, and some signs of respiratory trouble, such as sneezing and nasal discharge. Sudden death can be caused by psittacosis. Psittacosis used to be very difficult for veterinarians to diagnose in live birds, but recently new methods have been discovered to make it much easier for psittacosis to be detected. Treatment for psittacosis is lengthy, taking 45 to 60 days. The diseases we've discussed should give you a good basis for understanding your bird's health requirements. They are certainly not all the diseases you may encounter in your bird's lifetime. It's important to remember that if your bird's behavior is abnormal, it's best to consult an avian veterinarian. Most diseases have cures if they are detected and treated early.
Taming and training your bird will give you a better relationship with your pet. There are as many different techniques for taming and training as there are experts. There's only one universal ingredient accepted by all trainers, patience. Most trainers believe that a bird's wings should be clipped before taming and training begins. This is something you can do yourself, but if you're worried about it, a veterinarian or bird groomer will also take care of the job for you. Clipping a bird's wings reduces the amount of injury it can do to itself by flying away during taming. Wing clipping is, of course, a temporary measure, as the feathers will soon be replaced in the next molt. Wing clipping is usually a two-person procedure. One person to hold the bird usually in a towel so that you don't get bit, and the other person to pull out the wings and cut the feathers. This little guy has been trimmed once before, and we're only going to trim the outer four to six feathers. Right up for this level right there. Here? Yep, up a little higher. No, a little higher, Mom, right there. Yeah. Okay, we like to do both sides. We use a sharp pair of scissors to carefully cut across the flight feathers. This will render him flightless for a couple months or until his next molt. After your bird has had an adequate amount of time to settle into its new surroundings and get used to you, you can begin with some basic training. A tea stand, like this one, or a playpen will give you a place away from the bird's home for training. This is important since the bird may not take to taming right away the bird should still think of its home as a safe place. So, how do you get the bird from its cage to the taming, er taming area? There are a couple different techniques you might find helpful. Try opening the bird's cage and offering it a, a perching dowel, which you are holding in your hand. If the bird will climb aboard the perch, you can transfer it to the taming area. Try coaxing the bird onto the perch with some of its favorite foods. Eventually, you shouldn't need the foods. The bird will participate just for the fun of it. If the bird gets away from you, don't go crazy chasing the bird around the room, flailing your arms and yelling. I've seen it. This will prove most stressful for both of you. The bird won't understand and you won't catch your bird. Instead, walk calmly toward it, speaking softly or whistling. As soon as you get near it, the bird will fly off. So aim it in the direction of the cage. Once the bird sees the cage, it's likely to return to it on its own. As a last resort to return a defiant bird to its cage, Darken the room as completely as possible. In a steady motion, grasp the bird physically and place it inside his cage. In the dark, the bird won't be able to see your face and it shouldn't threaten your relationship. If your bird is prone to biting or if you're worried about it, wear thick gloves or better yet, use a bath towel between you and your bird. After a while, you should be saving the goodies as rewards for good behavior rather than enticement. For instance, Hold the treats in your hand, and when the bird moves freely onto the perch or finger and climbs aboard the tea stand readily, reward will be a treat. Eventually, your taming will reach a new phase, where the bird makes the first move and climbs onto your shoulder or lands on your head. Don't be startled or angry when this aggressive behavior happens. Be pleased with the behavior. Yes. If your bird is not clipped, it could land on you at any time. A bird with clipped wings needs an opportunity. If your bird is clipped, try sitting right next to the bird's play area. Once the bird climbs aboard, don't move at all. You don't want to alarm your bird. Your bird will probably rest quietly on your shoulder or preen your hair. After some time, slowly offer your bird a finger or an arm to climb aboard. If the bird accepts the finger, your job will be much easier. There you go. You should have no trouble getting the bird to climb on your finger in the future. Each time the bird completes another step of the taming process, reward it with words or treats. Once the bird has climbed onto your hand, always offer your hand from then on. Let the bird walk all the way up your arm to your shoulder or head. At this point, your bird is hand trained. You will probably be able to develop a fairly intimate relationship. Did you want to feed him? Try scratching your bird under its wing. Most birds love it. Let other people handle the bird too. If a bird, especially a parrot, is only handled by one person, it may become totally devoted to that person and it may turn vicious towards other people. 
With the right care and attention, birds can live a long life. When you bring a bird into your home as a pet, it very often becomes a member of the family. And pet birds deserve all the love and care any other member of the family would receive. A happy home, a pleasant environment, and a responsible owner all adds up to a devoted, loving pet that will be your companion for years.